Hey everyone, this is Ben with the YouTube channel Random Insights, and I'm going to talk about replacing a hard drive in an HP Pavilion 15T-N200 model. I recently had a drive fail on me, the computer froze up, I could not get back into it, it kept freezing and lagging. I was able to get into the main menu on the computer by hitting, I think it was F2 or F11, one of those two. And I could run a diagnostic test on it, and it checked the hard drive and said that it had indeed failed. So I had to replace that. I'm going to give a few tips here on buying another one, and then I'm going to show you video footage of me taking mine out and replacing that and how to disassemble and reassemble the laptop, okay? So first of all, I had a 750 gigabyte hard drive in it, 5400 RPMs, and it was a 2.5 inch wide by 9.5 millimeter drive. The model number was ST750LM022. HN-M750MBB, and it was a Samsung hard drive that failed. And I only had this about a year and maybe three or four months. It was just out of warranty, so of course I had to replace it myself. Now, one of the questions I had was whether or not I could just replace it with any kind of aftermarket drive, and or if I had to order it specifically from HP. And the answer is yes, you can replace it with pretty much any aftermarket drive, with a couple of exceptions, but you wanna make sure that you get one that's gonna be compatible. And what I ultimately went with, I went with a, just a regular hard disk drive. It wasn't an SSD or anything, just a re regular hard disk drive. It was a Western Digital Black Series, model number WD7500BPKX. And that cost me 60 bucks. It's a bare drive. All that means is that it came literally in the packaging with nothing else, no paperwork, no hardware, just literally a drive. And that's all you need or all I needed in this case because I just swapped it out. And it's 7,500 RPMs and it had 60 megabytes cache. If you want to know more about the specs, you can just look up that model number online. Now, the, the thing you want to make sure is that you get an internal laptop drive. That's important. You want it to be a 2.5 inch, if that's what your model number calls for. That's what my model number called for. And you want to make sure the thickness, whether it be 7.0 or 9.5, is going to be similar to the one that you had. And you can look up the hard drive information on your PC, even if it's damaged, usually by going into the main menu, or you can look it up by the model number and you should be able to check on HP's website and find out what you had. But the one I replaced it with was 9.5 millimeters and 2.5 inch uh, wide. So next, you have to have recovery disk when you replace the hard drive. And I did not make the backup recovery disks on this particular computer. I thought I had, but I actually did not have that. And it's really important that you make that if you, if you can. And if not, you're going to have to buy those recovery disks from HP. I had to spend $30. They shipped it in about a week or so. It came to my house um, with standard shipping. So you're going to want to have those. And it came with three disks that install, reinstalled the Microsoft Windows 7 Home Premium Operating System. And it had a fourth disk, which was all the software drivers and hardware drivers. That's really important because it's going to recognize all those adapters and everything you have on your computer. The key thing you want to keep in mind, by the way, is you want to get at least the same number of gigabytes when you buy a hard drive. Uh, some people with HP computers do have an issue if they go lower. So if you have a 500 gigabyte hard drive, go at least 500 or more. And so that's the main gist of what you need to know. And that's what worked for me. And it's working great. I've had it in a few days now. So I'm going to show you some footage of how I took it apart and put it back together and give you a few tips on how I did that. Okay. First, you want to disconnect all accessories and the power adapter and then remove the battery by snapping it off just like I'm doing here. Next, you've got a little compartment here in the back. Take those two screws out and pry it up in the back. It's kind of tricky. This will help you access the RAM and also the Wi-Fi card. So just peel that back. Now with the RAM, you've got two little metal pins that kind of spring off when you push them outward. So push them outward, the RAM will pop up, gently slide that out. And then you've got your little network card or network adapter and I had one or two screws, undo that, and then it has two little connector wires. Be careful taking those off. Don't get them mixed up. Don't let them touch each other or touch some other part of the circuit board. Um, you may want to put a little piece of styrofoam or a little protective uh, piece of, uh, of plastic over those while you disconnect. Then you want to take off the DVD drive. It has one screw. Then you can take a paper clip and stick in a small hole in the front like I just did there and then kind of pull it out. You might have to tug a little bit, but be careful not to damage it. 
Next, you want to take off this keyboard screw, and there's one screw in the back there that has a little picture of a keyboard. Stick that paper clip through that and kind of press on the keyboard to dislodge it from there. It's kind of tricky. Now you can pull it up from the back once you, once you get that loose. Just pop it from the back and pull it up gently. Now it is connected by a Ziff connector, and the Ziff connector is tricky. Where my left hand is here in a second, you want to take your hand in that position, and then there's a little plastic black part and I stuck my fingernail underneath that flat plastic part and clicked it up. That's tricky. It's not the white part, it's the black part. Next you got about five to eight screws here on this metal part. Take those off and you have two more ZIF connectors that you need to disconnect before you can take that off and the same way you took that other one off, just clicking that black up just like you saw me there. Now flip it over and take all those little screws off the back off. Put them somewhere safely so you know where they're going. You might have to tap it like that gently to get some out. But do that. You also have somewhere the DVD drive where there are three little silver screws. Make sure to take those out. Then flip it back over and you want to press to the back where the monitor connects to snap it up first. It came out easier there in that shot because I'd already worked with it, but it's kind of tricky. Just keep snapping it up, but be careful not to break it. Now you've got the hard drive area. There is another zip connector that goes over top the hard drive. You want to disconnect that first and remove with one screw the little connector. I think it was a audio input and something else. But you remove that and then you can access the hard drive. Now the hard drive was not screwed in. You just lift it back, lift it up and then pull it backward. I had one plug-in connector that just popped right out. You pull that out and then it had a black part around the hard drive. I removed that because the new hard drive did not have that. It's sort of a rubber protective casing. So I removed that from the old hard drive and I put that rubber protective casing around my brand new hard drive. I plugged it back in and stuck it right in the same place. Then reconnect that ZIV connector, put the top back on and snap it all around like I'm doing here. Then reattach those two little ZIV connectors on the top right there, just like you took it apart. Then put the five to eight screws, I believe it was, in this uh, metal frame, the top panel chassis part. Now you put the keyboard in. Be careful reconnecting that into the ZIF connector because it's real easy to mess that up. And if your keyboard doesn't work properly, that's where your problem is. Then it just snaps back in. Flip it back over and put the keyboard screw in. Now you can go around and put all those little screws back in. Again, keep them separated so you know which order they go. Now I'm putting in the wireless adapter card again by just gently plugging it in and then pressing it down. Attach the screws and connect the wires. Then you can put your RAM in after you get to this and put the panel back on. Put the, make sure your drive goes back in and put that in and you are all set All up. right, so that's it. I hope that helps you a little bit. I apologize that some of those shots were out of frame.